will continue to look at uh, structures causing a shape growth today. Uh, basic structure. of population affected by births as well as carrying capacity and we defined a ratio p by c this is p n this is your uh, c then we have defined a fractional birth rate b and we defined a effective fractional birth rate oh, sorry as the model. So, you have taken up this basic model where we were looking at how population growth gets constrained uh, at a later stage by the carrying capacity initially when the when it is not constrained you get exponential growth when the and as the population approaches carrying capacity we can see an asymptotic growth. So, that is the dynamics we saw. So, let us try to draw it right here let us say this is your uh, no. uh, ok let us draw a rate level chart let us make it level or stock on the x axis and rates on the y axis. So, for this system as as it all as the population increases the rate rather here in this case it is only the birth rate continues to increase and after the inflection point the birth rate falls down and reaches an equilibrium uh, somewhere later. So, the expected graph here we can see will be like this. this point here is your uh, let me just write it here unstable equilibrium and this point here becomes your stable equilibrium and this line here that we have drawn will be both the say so this is the birth uh, birth rate as well as the net rate. In this case birth rate net rate is the same graph we just have only one particular curve uh, right here. Then we had gone and drawn the deaths as a another variable within the system. So, we had defined deaths and initially we defined deaths as just a fractional death rate d we kept it as an external factor here. So, what we did for this particular scenario let us call it uh, say scenario uh, let us just make this part as a scenario A. So, this is the curve I get for uh, scenario A the stable equilibrium for scenario A and when I include the scenario B let us see what happens. So, this is scenario B. So, 
in scenario B, I have defined a death rate which increase in proportion to the level of stock, right? It is just a D multiplied by your total population, so it is going to be a linear curve. So, this is your death on death rate as in scenario B. As a result, we are going to have a net a net rate which could be a which is nothing but the birth rate minus the death rate. So, birth rate continues to get affected independent of this. So, we will assume that it is the same curve there will be some small changes in the population, but for practical purpose you will assume it to be a or rather analytical purpose you will continue to assume this is the birth rate and this is the death rate. So, we will compute a new net rate for scenario B which could be something like uh, this which will intersect this curve somewhere here. So, this is your net rate for scenario B. This is your now new equilibrium point. is a new equilibrium right here as you can see by adding a constant or a proportionate uh, outflow your equilibrium moved from this point to this point here that means system is going to saturate at a much lower value of stock so it may not reach the carrying capacity once again change the model we again introduce something called as an effective fractional death rate And then we computed that. So, this this part written here is only for scenario C. So, scenario C this link is not there. So, as we make death also change with respect to the carrying capacity as the population approach carrying capacity death rate is going to increase further uh, or increase non-linearly. So, this can be captured uh, graphically as the level increases my death rate also changes. So, let us assume that death rate kind of say uh, change like this let us assume this is uh, death rate for scenario C. So, as per this my effective net my net rate for scenario C is further defined by this birth rate blue color and this dotted line as a death rate. So, the equilibrium point further shifts downwards and this becomes a new equilibrium point right here. So, as more and more constraints keep happening, so we can learn couple of things here as more and as the constraints start acting on the actual state of the system and as it starts affecting the flows, the point of equilibrium will be lower as more constraints keep coming. Initially, the constraint is only on the births. Uh, so, I stop here even if I had a constant exogenous outflow or proportionate exogenous outflow I found that the equilibrium shifted downwards because more uh, inflows and outflows are acting on the more outflows are acting on the stock in this case. Suppose both uh, birth rate and death rate is getting affected by the carrying capacity then my new equilibrium point is much lower. So, equilibrium point refers to the value of the stock. So, if you assume this is the carrying capacity we are able to reach it that means, here we cannot reach the carrying capacity you can you just I can visualize it very easily that I am going to saturate at a point much lower than the carrying capacity of the system because of the non-linear dynamics on the birth rate as well as the death rate.
that is C right here. See if death rate and birth rate then they are independent of each other right, then it makes sense to actually do the comparison among them, but the equilibrium point will be the point of intersection between death rate and birth rate that is a net. So, here this this point, so this is the equilibrium point compared to this, this is the equilibrium point against which this is happening, it is a point at which net rate this is the point at which birth rate equal death rate that is inflows equal to outflow. So, that becomes your equilibrium point right. Anything here that means birth rate, birth rate is lower, death rate is higher that means level of stock has to go down. So, that means it will go up here which is defined by this net rate value here. For this curve when you do not have this part of the model there is only birth rate and population then there is nothing to stop it going all the way down to 0 which becomes a new equilibrium point right ok. So, this is what we did last class a summary of it. This pattern is exhibited in various scenarios as population trends of many animals and plants, learning curves, diffusion of news, riots, epidemics, rumors are all exhibits this S shade pattern if you look at it the aggregate level. Initially uh, just take the third point on diffusion of news and uh, rumors. So, if you think about it initially when the news spreads it actually we use the term it spreads like wildfire that means it is actually going an exponential growth in the news, but after some time as as the entire population gets to know the information or gets to know the news or rumor or whatever it is then there is no new person hearing it. So, then it will saturate and hit the uh, capacity. So, there the diffusion again becomes S shaped. When growth of new products and various socio economic activities can also be attributed to this exponential growth. Initially everybody is full of enthusiasm and then they all exhibit exponential growth in various aspects. Then as time goes on new information we find it more and more difficult to absorb or uh, new news to difficult to spread and so on or even the new products as and when the market gets saturated. So, that is what we mean initially the growth is very nice lot of people are buying it, but then we use the term then the market becomes saturated. What we mean is it is achieving a uh, kind of uh, hitting the carrying capacity or uh, number of people who would like to buy the product is already reached no new products are sold. So, that is the time when we want to introduce a another new product. These are some example curves uh, exhibiting as shaped. Uh, here is a plot of uh, growth of sunflowers, their height and days. So, if you plot your own again, uh, what can you say? Your own growth spurt, you will probably get a S shaped curve. All your growth are saturated, you are not, you may grow wider, but not taller. So, that is kind of saturated right here. Again, cable TV growth, again, it is saturated nice S shaped pattern here and saturate as everybody starts to so own cable TV or uh, okay, anyway, um, satellite dish. The only new customers are going to come are the people are going to own uh, second TVs or going to buy new TVs and so on. Adoption of cardiac pacemakers of physicians again exhibits a nice S shaped pattern. This is from various different papers uh, that I found these curves, this amount of yeast and the time it takes for it to uh, for it to grow again a shape growth. This is the growth of Tasmanian sheep which has been shown in various other literatures where again the classical S shape pattern is shown after which it has reached a kind of a steady state and revolving around yeah, fluctuating around its mean. So, this growth is also called as logistic growth or a sigmoid growth. So, these other terms that you may come across in literature they all mean this S shape pattern. So, time path includes two distinct behavior as we saw. The general behavior is initially you have a exponential growth uh, until the inflection point and beyond the inflection point we have a saturation or asymptotic growth. Okay. We show the general behavior.
the general pattern is your time is your stock this is shape pattern that you are looking at so initially we have exponential growth and later we will have asymptotic growth or goal seeking so this point here is referred to as inflection point so inflection point is a point at which after which the negative feedback loop starts to dominate the positive feedback loop so this is exact behavior the general structure for that the general structure of a shaped growth is we have state of system a stock then we have the net rate this is your typical positive feedback system you can model a resource adequacy you can define a carrying capacity Define a fractional net increase. So this is your uh, positive feedback loop, and this becomes your negative feedback loop. So this is the general structure which is going to cause a shaped growth. So we are going to pretty much be having our positive feedback. As well as a negative feedback, which is constrained by your uh, carrying capacity, or which affects the resource adequacy. Kindly note that it's slightly different from the birth model that we saw. In birth model, we had a negative link here because we divided by carrying capacity, and we have positive link here, and we made a negative link here. Doesn't matter. Eventual loop is a negative feedback loop. That's what we want. As long as that is satisfied, we are going to get a shaped growth, where the net rate and st state of system getting affected. Positive feedback and negative feedback. At point of inflection, the negative feedback will start to dominate after the point of inflection. Until then, the positive feedback loop dominates, causing exponential growth. So, when we read it or we write about it, it is always initially the system state is driven to an exponential growth within the system when the resources are adequate. As the resource adequacy approaches the carrying capacity, the net net rate slows down causing an asymptotic growth and finally growth ceases having shown this generic structure actually this is first this is the first structure that we have seen which is show which can model the growth with a limiting factor whatever we have discussed till now is with based on this limiting factor or carrying capacity we can have a second structure derived from systems involving epidemics new product diffusion and rumors where these two different loops may not be very apparent to you, but it still cause a, a shaped growth. 